mercy endures forever and ever. We give you glory, honor, dominion, and majesty because you remain God. You are faithful. You are kind. You are loving. You are awesome. You are wonderful. We celebrate you for this grace that you have given to us to come again to your presence. Not by our power, not by our might, but by your grace alone. And we are enjoying this grace and testifying to this grace. Father, receive all our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. As we have come, Lord, we want to see you move in our midst this morning. Lord, let your power descend upon us. Let there be testimonies this morning. Let your unction fall upon us. At the end of this service, Lord, let us return back, dancing and jubilating, giving glory to you, and let all the glory continue to be yours. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. The processional hymn.
the name of our Lord and Savior, we welcome every one of us into this divine service. My prayer for every one of us today is that grace that has brought us thus far will never leave us in the name of Jesus. I pray that the anointing of God will be made evident upon your life in the name of Jesus. Today, we will start as we celebrate Jesus with very good choruses and dancing and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. Choir. Father, we worship you for another beautiful morning in your presence. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and beat me up, my father strong. Make all my want and wishes known in seasons of distress. My soul has often found relief. Escapes the tempter's snare. Escape By thy return, sweet of prayer. By thy return, sweet of prayer. And I escaped the Me. 
living Jesus. Watch at all times, praying that you may stand before the Son of Man, the service of Holy Eucharist. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. This is the day which the Lord has made. Call it for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Summary of the Lord. 
The Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear and O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments, hang God the law and the prophet. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people, meekly, kneeling. The general confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have not sufficiently worked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in our goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The collect, the peace, and the gospel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray as we take the collect together. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit back for the epistle. The epistle is taken from Romans, Romans 8, from verse 12 to 17. Romans 8, from verse 12 to 17. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. This is the word of God. 
As we sing the, the gradual hymn, we shall collect the covenant seed. After the first stanza, we pray over it. Let us lift up our covenant seat envelope as we pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your provision. We thank you for the opportunity given to us to give in this sanctuary today. May your name be praised forever in the name of Jesus Christ. As we give in our covenant seat today, we pray that you will make a covenant of peace with us today in the name of Jesus Christ. You will make a covenant of restoration with us in the name of Jesus Christ. This week shall be a blessing to us in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you bless the work of our hands in the name of Jesus Christ. No evil will before any of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Accept us today and accept our offering. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
today, Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 21, beginning at 28 verse. But what do you think? In my heart, two songs. And he came to the force and said, Son, go, walk today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, As surely I say to you, the task collectors and high lords enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But task collectors and high lords believed him. And when you say or saw it, you did not afterward relent and believed him. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Speak to us, Heavenly Father, in words that are clear. Let us hear you speaking in ancient and clear and still voice. Above the storm of passion, the moment of self-will, who oh, speak to reassure us today, to hasten and control us, who oh, speak and make us listen, O oh, Lord, the guardian of our soul. Let the words of thy mouth and the meditation of the heart of your people be acceptable in your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let the church say louder, amen. amen. If you believe, say louder, amen. amen. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Can we jam our hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the mighty God in battle. Amen. Please be seated. I welcome every one of us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to today's divine service. My prayer for you today is that God that has brought you here to see and to hear and to hear, listen will give you testimonies of his presence in the name of Jesus. Today, we are looking at the text, True Test of Discipleship. True Test of Discipleship. And I'm taking the text from the gospel that was read to us just now. And if the media will please join me and walk with me, Matthew chapter 21. And I want verse 31 and 32. Matthew chapter 21, verse 31 and 32. Can we all read together? Which of the two do the will of the Father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that tax collectors and harlots will enter the kingdom of God before you. 32. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, but you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe in him. I pray that this morning, the great understanding of God who fall upon every one of us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says Jesus was talking to his disciples. And while he was talking to his disciples, he was telling them some facts and figures. At the instance of talking to his disciples, he was talking with the people that came challenging and having problems with him. And so he had to give them a parable. And most of Jesus' parables at that time were parables that was above the people that he spoke with. And so some of the times he had to call disciples to talk to them at back, to explain more of his disciples, of his parables to them. And one of the parables was such that he said, a man went to his children. He had two sons. He went to the first one, and he said to the first one, my child, I want you to go to the farm for me. And the guy said, father, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to remain here. And the man said, okay, went to the second one. 
Answer to the second one. I want you to go to the farm for me. And the Bible says, the second one said, Father, I will go. And he never did. But the second one that said, the first one that said he wasn't going to go, the Bible said he repented and he felt bad. And then he took off. Something was common about the two of them. The thing that was common about the two of them was that the intention of going to the farm at the initial stage of talking to them was zero. Hallelujah. The intention of going to farm to that place where their father was sending them to was zero at the initial stage of their father's accent. The first one said, I'm not going. The second one said, I will go. But inside of him, he knew he was not going. The first one that said, I wasn't going, also inside of him at the initial stage, knew that he wasn't going. The true test of a disciple is not his ability to remain perfect all through the way, but it's his ability to be able to turn back after he has thought about the things that are important and very good. And so I was looking through this text and I was thinking to myself, I want to take us through a particular place and I hope I'll be able to finish this thing on time. Uh, number one, true test of a disciple is what is called the golden rule. The golden rule. The true test of a disciple is what is called the golden rule. And what is the golden rule? Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. That is the golden rule. The first true test of a disciple is his ability to live by this rule. That a disciple will stand and say of a truth inside of me, there is something that is very important and that is love. I was sharing with somebody in the course of the week and I said to that person, I said, the most important thing about Christianity is love. And the person said, yes, ah, Jesus Christ said it. I said, no, you don't understand. I said, it is easy to obey all the commandments the moment you live by love. You don't need to cram them. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to put them in your head. The moment you decide that I am going to live by love, I am going to live by love. I'm not going to live by any other thing. I'm going to live by love. The moment you do that, you obey all the commandments. Because if you look at it, the Bible says, the first one, do not uh, make for yourself, do not uh, bow down. The, it says, obey uh, the Sabbath, keep it holy, and so on and so forth. All of these things reflect a love for God. So if you have love for God, you will not worship any other thing. You will not worship human. You will not worship money. You will not worship estates. You will not worship gods. You know, recently I discovered, uh, it's not recent, but I've, I've been knowing it, but I also discovered because I thought that when our generation, as we, are, as we are coming up, I thought that exposure was more and that we are more exposed than the people of old. So if the people of old believed in things that were fetish, that these younger ones would not believe in things that were fetish. But recently I discovered that virtually everybody has their own side of fetishness. Hallelujah. Some people, they have their select pastors that they talk to when they have problems. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Some people have the, those people that have the ability to mix the Bible and something else that they use when they have challenges. They have. And when you get close and you start talking to them, that is when you will know that they have another shocking somewhere. A woman said to me, said, Reverend, he said, uh, uh, can you believe it? That one mama, and that mama he was a, a lay reader, not only a lay reader, she was head of evangelical for so long, for very long. She said, that mama, that when I told her about the situation, that that mama said, ah, there is one place that we'll go to in Ekitio, that when we get to that place in Ekitio, that baba, he will first open with prayer. He will start with prayers. That the place is, Orioke is a mountain, but that is not only, uh, so when you get there and they start to show you some things, don't be surprised. 
love for God. How is your love for God? What have you done with your love for God? How are you moving with your love for God? Your love for your human, fellow human beings. Uh, the other day I said, I said, you cannot love God. That's what the Bible says. It says, you cannot love God. When you have not loved the one, you can see. The one you can see. You have not loved the person. And you are now saying, I love God. How can you love God? When the one you can see, you cannot love. The one that God said, I made in my own image, you have not loved. The one that God said, I made in my own likeness, you have not loved. You are now saying you love God. It is not possible for you to love God without loving your neighbor. And do you know another addendum to it? It's not even possible for you to love God without loving your enemies. Without loving your enemies. You can't love God without loving your enemies. Because the standard of God is that you must love your enemies. That's the standard. You must love your enemies. He says, love them. He says, even those that despitefully use you. Even those that despitefully use you. He says, love them. So you cannot love God without loving your enemies and loving your neighbors. Can you help me ask your neighbor, how far now? Let me ask your neighbor now, how far now? Ask that to your neighbor. If that neighbor is not answering, say, how far now? Say, do you love that guy? Eh? That guy up there. Do you love that guy up there? Help me ask your neighbor. Do you love that guy up there? Eh? But ask your neighbor, have you started by loving me? Have you started by loving me? Ask your neighbor. Have you started by loving me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I was preaching somewhere and I said, I said, if you are sitting beside your husband and your wife, I said, stand up. And these couples, a lot of them stood up. And I said, look at your wife and tell your wife, I sincerely love you. And if my love is not sincere, may the wrath of God fall upon me. <laughs> Hallelujah. More than three quarters of the guys standing did not talk. They closed their mouth because they feared the wrath of God. Amen. Because the love is not sincere in their heart. A lot of people are just cohabiting. Love has gone. And you see, the thing, the thing about love that I know about love is that love is a challenging position. Love is not when it is pleasant. Love is not when it is beautiful. Love is not when you are saying, that one is infatuation, that one is a butterfly in your belly, that one is Nigerian available love. Amen. The real love is when it is challenging and you can stand there. It says, for God so loved the world that he did what? What did he give him to do? Huh? Eh? To die upon the cross. That's love. So, ask your neighbor again. Do you love me? Help me now. Ask your neighbor, do you love me? Tell your neighbor, don't worry. The wrath of God is not falling on you. Do you love me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Number two test of a true disciple is faith. Media, can I have Luke chapter 6, verse 20, following? Luke chapter 6, verse 20. Luke chapter 6, verse 20. Aha. It says, Then he lifted up his eyes towards disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. 21. Luke 6, 21. 21. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep, for you shall laugh. 22, 22. Blessed are you who men hate you, and when they ex exclude you and reveal you and cast you your name as evil for the son of man's sake. The man that has faith is what I'm talking about this morning. The disciple, true test of a disciple is his test of faith. 
the test of his faith. And you see, a lot of times, a lot of times had happened that we have failed God in our tests. I was sitting at the airport some years back. I wasn't wearing the collar. And then the men sitting around me, I didn't know they were going in groups. So they started talking. And they started talking that, ah, pastors, they are thieves. Ah, they are uh, only a lot of them are thieves. They are robbers. They are this one. And uh, where I was sitting, I didn't answer. I didn't say a word. When my friend that were traveling together came, sat beside me, they continued their gist. Thieves and robbers. And, uh, uh, and the guy stood up and said, excuse me, we are in thieves. He said, we are not the robbers. He said, ah, you are a pastor. He said, we are not talking about you. And I stood up. I said, to them, I said, do you know them? Do you know him? You don't know him. And you're saying you're not talking about him. What if he just robbed and is taking the proceeds of his robbery to Abuja with you? But do you know the sad part for me was that when we landed in Abuja, before we got out of the plane, these guys started changing to their suits. And we saw when they got outside, they brought out uh, the paper to pick them. And we saw the name of the church. I won't mention it. We saw the name of the church. And we discovered that most of them that were talking were pastors. They were pastors themselves. So I went to them and I said, what is the test of our faith if you will condemn each other? What's the test of our faith if you will condemn each other? Where do we stand? What are we standing for? If you will condemn each other. And they said there, the truth is that there is one man there that was sitting with them that day, at that time in Lagos. That man is planning to give uh, one of them a contract, but he hates pastors. So they had to dress down uh, for them to collect the contract they want to collect. Uh, they had to speak down at themselves to collect what they wanted to collect and then they flew all over to Abuja before they now could suit up to now represent what they want to represent and I said if pastors will go this way then what are we talking about the two true test of our faith this blessed is the man that is hated for what he stands for that is for Christ he says for the son of man he is hated because of the son of man. He says that man is blessed. They can see what is in inside of him. They know what is of him. They know the content that he carries. They know that he will not compromise. They know that he will stand for God. They know that this one would always do what is right. I went to one ministry in Lagos State. I wanted to do a paper. And uh, I was said, asking them, who can help me? Who can help me? And I, they said, this man can help me. Another person called me and said, come, 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 come. Let me tell you, if you go there and you think you will give him money, and he will skip so many things, he would not do. He's a Christian. I was happy. I went to him. And I told him, I said, I want to do so, 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 so thing. And you will not believe it. The cost of what they had given me in the past for doing what I wanted to do, what he gave me was half of it. And meanwhile, those people that know how to do it quickly, you know, uh, that giving me the cost of what they will eat, what they will drink in the evening, their children's school fees, and so many other things. They have added it to my bill. But by the moment I got to the Christian, and they said, this one, if you are thinking that you are going to go and bribe him, he will not give you anything. The man stood up, gave me everything I needed to get, and that was it. There was no attachment. Christian, he says, if the Son of Man will be hated on account of you, says, that is the true test of a Christian. Disciples, when they were in Antioch, the people said they were behaving like Christ. They saw Christ in them, and they decided to label them. They gave them an appellation, and today we are happy to be called by that name, Christ-like. 
They were Christ-like in nature. Everything they did was about Christ. Number three of true mark of a disciple is that a disciple is obedient. You know, one of the things that is come about the first son, the Bible says, and when Jesus went to, when the father went to him, says the father said to him, I want you to go to the farm for me. He said, I'm not going. And after he left, the Bible said, he repented. He repented. He repented. And when he repented, he decided to go there. Obey. Decided to obey his father. You know, this parable is a parable that means a lot to me. I'll tell you why. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, I was one of those children that when you come and fight, my parents come to fight and say, this is what we want you to do. This is how you want you to do it. And this, I'm one of those ones that don't know how to argue. I don't know how to argue. I'll say, yes, sir. And then one of those days, my father came to me and said, you are the worst child. And I said, why, sir? He said, because you will not argue. You will say, yes, sir. Huh? But you will not do it. He says, you are the worst child. He said, I'm not talking about, he said, the Bible. He opened it up to me and said, read it. Which one are you? I said, that one. So, is Jesus happy with that one? I said, no. Because of the truth, I said, yeah, I will tell, the, I will tell him, yes, no problem. But when, once he leaves, uh, later, I, I got born again. And when they, they come to me and they say, this one, I will tell them, no, I'm not doing. And they say, no, I insist that you must do it. I say, okay. And I will leave. I was half born again until I now knew Christ eventually. Amen. Because the one that is obedient is the one that God honors. The one that is obedient, even when it is not comfortable, he is obedient. Even when it is challenging, he is obedient. Even when it does not sound well, it is obe he is obedient. That's the one Christ loves. So the Bible says, which one of them was the obedient one? And they answered Jesus Christ immediately. They said, Ah, this one now, the one that said he wasn't going to go, and he went. That's the one that is obedient. The others, the other one, decided he was not going to go and said to his father, Ah, I will go. And a lot of Christians are like that, too. A lot of Christians are like that. You hear history. My grandfather's father was the one that built the house in our village for the mission. When they came, my father was the one that started the PCC. My grandfather was the one that carried the bell of the church, which is head to this one. It was Pa Shego, Bishop Shego, that confirmed me. No, Bishop Kale confirmed me. Then some will say it was even Stephen Go uh, Vining, Gordon, Gordon Vining, that confirmed them. Some will say Adetiloye was the one that laid his hand on me, and I was confirmed. And yet, their life is not showing anything Christ-like. Their life is not showing anything Christ-like. They know the history of all of the Anglican church, even more than some of the priests. But nothing to show for their Christian journey. They can stand and argue in the church from morning to night on what the church should be but nothing to show for what Christ wants them to be. And if that is your category, good news, you are hearing this word this morning. Obedient. The next one, for any true discipleship to be seen in the life of anybody, any Christian, there must be sincerity. You see, there is something that I've discovered in the church and it worries me. It worries me. We got to a diocese. And when we got to that diocese, I took my father on Episcopal visits. I was the one driving him. And uh, on our way back, he decided not to sit in the back. He came to the front and sat with me. 
He sent his chaplain to another car. And on our way, he looked at me and said, my son, he said, what will be hard here? I said, why? He said, it will be very hard here. I said, why, daddy? God gave you victory in the other houses you came from. So God will give you victory here as well. He said, mm -mm -mm. He said, in that diocese, they came out and they sincerely said they were, they belonged to uh, Reform the Bonnet Fraternity, they belonged to Awapa, they belonged to this one, they belonged to that one. He said, haven't you noticed that this one, all their cabbages are born again? Haven't you noticed that when you enter their palaces, they will tell you that they are born again, they are born again, and that they give their life to Christ on so, so day. Give their life to Christ at so so time. Give their life to Christ at so so time. And I will tell a little bit of history because I, he, 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 in the diocese he was coming from, they made a mistake. And what was their mistake? They gave his secretary, uh, the, the father of the secretary gave the secretary the list of all their members from Lagos to uh, Benin that the lady should help him do photocopies uh, and type. So the list of all their senior members from Lagos to Benin gave it to the lady. As the lady was typing a copy for them, she was also typing a copy for the bishop. So my father has the list. He said, even the one that I saw that is very high ranking, there, when I got to his house, he was telling him, I'm born again, I'm born again, I'm born again. And he said, okay, there will be so much, this work here will be so tough to do. I said, why will it be tough? He said, because there, they came out and they said, sincerely, uh, we need help. And we started praying. But here, they came out and they said, we don't need help. We are already the same way as you are. Just continue to fool us. Continue to fool yourself. And that's the way a lot of Christians are. We know how to show the picture of everything, God. But inside of us, I asked one child yesterday, I said, if you are God and you are to judge your life by what I don't know of you, will you enter heaven? And the child looked at me and said, Daddy, he said, the place I will put myself in hellfire, he said, it will be too much. Hallelujah. He said, the place I will put me myself in hellfire, he said, it will be too much. And honestly, inside of us, as we are sitting down, ask yourself that question. If I am God and I to judge if I should enter the kingdom of heaven, will I enter? If I am to judge by my way of life, will I enter the kingdom of heaven? Do I deserve to enter the kingdom of heaven? And the simple question must be sincere. Our love must be sincere. That child was very sincere with his father. He said, I won't go. Because at that moment, he wasn't feeling like going. But the moment the father turned, he thought to himself, this is my father's desire. I will honor my father's desire above myself, above my desire, above my will. He says, I will go. And he got up and he left. Where is your will contending with God, child of God? Where is that will of yours contending with God? Where is the flesh contending with God? Where is the things, the things that you desire and you want for yourself, where are they contending with God? What challenges is there proving itself to you and you are now letting down your guard? Huh? The last one that I want to talk about, the, the true test of a disciple huh? is his ability to weather the storm. His ability to do what? His ability to do what? The Bible says they got to the boat. J 
Jesus gave them instruction and he said, go to the other side. Ah, huh? And they got to the other side. They got to the boat and they entered into a storm. And when they entered into the storm, they could not believe what the storm was doing to them. And you see, the storm, the water, was a place most of them were picked from. When we were in Ikale Laje in those days, I remember very well, then you get to the river. When we get to the river, I was telling my children, I said, me, I didn't learn swimming by paying 20,000 every, every semester. I be thumb. I learned swimming by jumping inside the river and knowing how to swim. Dirty and black, brackish water. We swam there and we enjoyed it. Hallelujah. And, and those children, in those days, when we get to the water and I want to jump, they'll say, oh, don't jump here. I say, ah, ah, why? Say, there is snake inside this water. Bahle Shimo. Say, ah, if you see that that water is changing place in that place, that is snake. And then we'll get to another one. They say, mm, the fish here, they are kind of somehow. Me, I can't see fish. They'll say, ah, can't you see there are poo poo on the water? It's not poo poo that I'm seeing. I'm seeing something else. And then we'll be at the river and they'll say, oh, let's go. It's about to rain. And I'll still be looking at the sun. I'll say to them, no, it's not about to rain. And before I finish saying that statement, the weather will change. They know it. They've seen it. They've been on the waters for so long. I don't know. They said legend even has it that when they give birth to their babies, uh, they first drop them inside the water. If the baby floats, they say he's a child of an Elajeman. If the baby does not float, they say that one is a bastard. They brought it from outside. I don't know. I've not seen them do it too. But that's the legend that I had. Though. Amen. But what I'm coming out is these people knew about the water. They could do anything in the water. Peter and the rest of the disciples were like that. They were Jesus met them on the water. Jesus called them on the waters. So the storm was not the first one they were seeing in their lives. And they know how to undo it. But this one was way above their knowledge. Was way above their capacity. Uh, and Jesus Christ gives us examples. The storms of life, when they come, challenging us. There are issues of life that will come, challenging us. It will be beyond our capacity. It will be beyond our knowledge. They tried everything they knew how to do. But there was nothing that could help them until Jesus came. And the Bible says he spoke and he said, peace be still. That story is not just for us to read and enjoy. That story is for us to understand that when the storm of life comes, there is somebody that can only say a word. But it depends on how much you trust that person. The true test of a disciple is your trust in the capacity and the capability of that person. I was praying with somebody many, many years ago. We went to the altar. I said, kneel down. And we knelt down. And I prayed three minutes. And I got up and I said, it is done. The man walked away. He came back again and called me and said, come. He said, you know, I like saying things in my heart. I don't like keeping griev grievances or grudges. I said, yes. <coughs> he said, I'm telling you that I have crisis in my life. You are praying three minute prayer. He said, that three minute prayer, you think can solve everything. If we now go to Babala, when you people will start shouting. And I said, don't worry, Baba. There are assignments I will give you. I understand the opposition. I said, there are assignments I will give you. I said, you will go and buy one goat. There is something we will do in the middle of the night, at 12 midnight, for that goat. He said, eh, hey, hey, you are just talking. I said, okay. So when he got home, he called me. Eh, hey, hey, you did not tell me the color of the goat. I told him, I said, when you bring the goat in the middle of the night, I will tie it at the back of my house. And in the morning, somebody will help me kill it. 
I like goat meat, seriously. They will boil it, and I will enjoy it. I will do pepper soup and everything with it. So if you want to still buy me goat, bring it to no problem. But a lot, of, a lot of us are like that. We don't believe in the power of prayers. Two weeks after, the wife came to me and said, Reverend, I have a challenge. I said, what's the challenge? She told me about it. Let's go to the altar. This one was even shorter. And when I finished, the woman got up and rolled on the floor and said, it is settled. I said, it is done. And she left. One hour later, she called me back, said, God is an awesome God. She said, by the time I got home, the testimony was waiting. I said, go and tell your husband. His own was three minutes. Your own was one and a half minutes. Because when God arises, by your faith is what he works with. So when the storms of light come, don't just send fear there to go and open the door for the storm. Send your faith there to go and tell the storm, I am here and Jesus is here with me. I am here and you cannot overcome me. I am here and there is no way you can pull me down because Jesus is here with me. True disciple, test. The storms will come home. The challenges will come home. But guess what? The Bible says in the world you will see tribulations. He says, but be of good cheers because I conquered. He did not come to conquer the world for himself. He didn't come to conquer the world for his father. Who did he come to conquer the world for? You and I he came to conquer for me. So your faith matters when the storms of life come. Help me tap your neighbor. Help me tap your neighbor. Help me ask your neighbor. When the storm of life comes, how far now? Hallelujah. Can you help me ask your neighbor again? Say, when the storm of life comes, ask your neighbor, how far now? Final question. Ask your neighbor again. When the storms of life come, where should we turn to? Can you buy your heads and talk to your father? Buy your heads and talk to your father. Lord, I want my life to reflect you. Not any other thing. I want my life to reflect you. When the challenges come, when the storms come, I want my life to reflect you. I want you to be seen in my life as my all in all. I don't want to fail the test of true discipleship. I shouldn't be coming to church and going the same way I came in. Help me, Lord. Help me to hold on to you. Help me to walk hand in hand with you. Thank you, Father. I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. I put my hands in your hands, O oh Lord. I shall not fear for Jesus. Never fails, I put my hand in your hand, so Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
They offer three him. They offer by three. The choir. Uh, give us choruses as we take the collection, uh, Sunday collection, the offer tree, the building, uh, as we dance and celebrate Jesus. Let the choir lead us in choruses. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer with the heart of giving, and you may answer me it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, you have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Together, your Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for He is your living world, through Him have created all things in the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him have freed us from the Savior of sin, giving Him to the man as man and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted Him to your right hand and on the high. Through Him you have sent upon us your holy and life given Spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks, first has pleased you to give you give us your only begotten Son, manifesting in Trinity, but equal in majesty. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Hosanna. Blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us kneel as we continue in prayers. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and as if follow the example and obey its command, granted by the power of the Holy Spirit, this gift of bread and wine may be his own body and blood. We, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood and God, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, I remember it's offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread. And this cup is one perfect sacrifice. I accept through him our great high priest, these are sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink this holy gift in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, his spouse with your love, and unite us with the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you united in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. We are of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table. Merciful Lord, trust in our righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercies, we are not watching so much as the color of the crumbs on thy table. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Holy things to holy people. If any is holy, let him come. If any is not, let him repent. The Lord is here. The 
the table is set. Come, let us die.
the uh, whistle here. In keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new heart, the home of righteousness. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, I know be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, our saints in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Pray of thanksgiving together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Can we jump our hands to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords? So we'll have the Thanksgiving now. As we'll be calling on uh, the families that want to have their family harvest today. Mayor <coughs> <coughs> yeah, Otumba and Princess Kuleojo, 
Mr. and Mrs. Celeste Numeibe, families of Mr. and Mrs. Ayodele, uh, Ayodeji Omotoyibo, families of Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Joseph Afolabi, families of Mr. and Mrs. Dada, and families of Mr. and Mrs. Ogumba, they would uh, please dance forward with uh, them. Everybody that wants to have their family address today to dance forward now. Choir. Father, King of glory, 
we thank you, we worship you, we magnify your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for all your children who have come forward to celebrate their family harvest before you. Father, as we present the family of Ojo, the family of Celestine Umebe, the family of Omotonyibo, the family of Afolabe, the family of Kunle Dada, and everyone that have joined them in this family harvest, the family of Ugumba. Father, we pray that your goodness and your mercy will continue to be upon all these families in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we pray for them as they have come forward to appear in this altar, in this holy altar. Father, we pray that God that made the heaven and heart we appear to them today in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. We pray for them that the Lord Almighty will continue to prosper them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you have done this unto the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lord. We pray that the power of the Almighty God will stand for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Concerning all this family, we declare it shall be celebration of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray that no evil shall be for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of Jacob will defend you. Amen. The God of Jacob will uphold you. Amen. The God of Jacob will preserve you. Amen. And it shall be well with you. Amen. We pray for each and every one of you that the Almighty God will shower his blessing upon you. Amen. It shall be well with you in everything you do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of harvest will shower his blessing upon you. We pray for every one of you that have joined them in this celebration. The Lord will continue to be with you. The Lord will continue to uphold you. It shall be well with you continually. In the name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, the name of God the Holy Spirit. Who is greater than Jehovah, Lord divine Lord? There is no one greater, no one greater, no one greater. There is no one greater than Jehovah. Hallelujah. Let's do this way. Say it. Oh, my God is good. Oh, my God is good. Oh, my God is good. We call on all our mothers for family altar thanksgiving as choir will give us crosses. It is not only mothers that we do family altar thanksgiving. Make sure you go to all the fathers before you come. Somebody should carry a bowl. Who is carrying the bowl? Go to all the fathers. Huh? Uh, uh, no, carry the bowl. Carry bowl. Go to the fathers. Carry bowls and go to the fathers. Huh? All fathers will do family altar thanksgiving. All fathers will do family altar thanksgiving. Where are the bowls now? Give them steward. Shanumi. I'm trying to work on time. Give of steward the way the boy uh, hair, uh, yeah. Fathers and then the mothers will dance forward with the offerings. As a choir will give us choruses. Oh yeah. be re lawa. Oh be re Oh, be the love of Oh, be the love of love And touch your power And she fell on Oh, be the love of love Oh, be the love of love Oh, be the love of love
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks and praise for these families in our church. We thank you for all our mothers. We thank you for your grace upon their lives and their homes. May your name be praised forever in the name of Jesus Christ. They have come to you today to celebrate and to rejoice in your presence. We pray that you accept their thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. And God Almighty, we bless you in return in the name of Jesus. God will keep your home for you in the name of Jesus. Your home will not scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Every intruder in your home, the Lord Almighty will send them away in the name of Jesus. Peace will continue to reign in your home in the name of Jesus. The Lord will continue to shower his blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Your children will pray that doors will be opened for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Doors of opportunity shall be opened in Jesus' name. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Mm -hmm. to give glory to the king of kings just say thank you father for counting me worthy say thank you father for counting me worthy say thank you father for counting me worthy can you celebrate him and say daddy i thank you because you have counted me worthy celebrate him celebrate the king of kings the lord of lords say father i thank you for counting me worthy say father i celebrate you for counting me worthy I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you dominion, I give you majesty. King of glory, be lifted, be lifted in my life. For all that you have done for me, I say thank you. From the depth of my heart, I say thank you. Father, I lift you up. I declare that you are God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you declare and say after me? Say, blood of Jesus, avail for me this week. Say it, blood of Jesus, fight for me this week. Say, blood of Jesus, defend my cause this week. Oh yeah, declare, declare. Let the blood of Jesus avail for me. Avail for my children, avail for my home. Blood of Jesus, fight my battles for me. It says we overcame by the words of their mouth and the blood of the Lamb. Lord, I ask that your blood will avail for me. Your blood will fight my battles. 
Your blood will win for me. Your blood will make me overcome. Your blood will call me an overcomer. Blood of Jesus, arise for me this week. Arise from my home this week. Arise from my home this week. Arise from my home this week. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you declare and say by fire? I possess my possession. By fire, I possess my possession. Every authority denying me or delaying me in the past. By fire, I possess that possession now. Can you declare it very well now? Declare, declare, declare. My possession of joy, my possession of sound health, my possession of sound mind, my possession of increase, my possession of authority, my possession, Lord, of prosperity. I possess it now. By fire, I possess it. Oh, you authorities, manipulating or denying and delaying me, I take authority over you now. I possess my possession in the name of Jesus. I possess my possession in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to declare finally and say, I will not die. Say, I will not die. I will live to testify to the glory of God in the land of living. Declare it, I will not die. My children will not die. My glory will not die. My health will not die. My life will not be cut short. I will testify to the glory of God in the land of the living. I will testify to the power of God in the land of the living. I will not die. I will not die. My glory will not die. My health will not die. My work will not die. My business will not die. My home will not die. My marriage will not die. My ministry will not die. I will not die. I will testify to your power in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I declare into somebody's life that can say this loud, amen. Every covenant that has been made with death, whether by you or by anyone that is projecting or planning into your life, I declare as you are saying these three loud amen. I return to sender now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to declare it again. Every covenant that has been made, whether with the sun, with the moon, with the stars, with the soil, with the sea, with the water, with the air, whatever covenant that has been made to disrupt your life, to bring you to money, to bring you to shame, to bring you to whatever ground level they are planning. I say such covenant is broken now. As you say these three amen in the name of Jesus. I declare over your life that anointing that carries one to the place where favor is, where they will be saying, until we see him, until we see her, we will not do anything. I declare that that kind of anointing fall upon you now in the name of Jesus. I want to say this. Whoever is planning evil for you, in your place of work, and you innocently do not know. Whoever is planning evil for you in your community, and you innocently do not know. Whoever is planning any evil agenda concerning you or your children, the Bible says that he who says he will suck our blood, God says, I will use their own blood to feed them, and they shall be full. So I stand upon that word, and I declare as you say that three loud amen. The bearer of the evil will carry themselves in the name of Jesus. I say that evil will not locate you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Thank you because you are going to bless these homes. Thank you because you are going to do for them what man cannot do for them. 
We pray for the families of Ibok, Idowu, Igbokwe, Igomerohe, Jeguno, Kalejaye, Ketselu, Lashore, Madu, Momo, and Mudra Deyo family. My God, you would honor them in the name of Jesus. You will bless them in the name of Jesus. You will prosper them in the name of Jesus. You will increase them in the name of Jesus. You will surprise them pleasantly in the name of Jesus. You will do for them what man cannot do for them in the name of Jesus. We pray for your son, Nicholas Lashore. We pray for Olushile Ogushemi. We pray for Mobola De. Abola Mode Bola Ajashi. We pray for Chinasa Ezeakwa. We pray for Ajayi M.O. We pray for Larry Oluwu. We pray for Ladotu Abola De. Father, as they celebrate their birthdays this week, my God, you will bless them in the name of Jesus. My God, you will honor them in the name of Jesus. My God, you will prosper them in the name of Jesus. That gift that man cannot give to one, my God, you will give to them in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will leave the light of countenance upon you. He will bless your going out. He will bless your coming in. Nothing you lay your hands upon will fail in the name of Jesus. I declare that as you go this week, anointing to prosper in all of your neighbors, my God will release to you in the name of Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with everyone now and forevermore. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. I know it's not everybody I'm talking to. I'm talking to those that are blessed alone. If you are one of them, shout a big hallelujah. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Can we clap for the Lord Jesus Christ? And laugh clap unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, you will please I crave your indulgence. You will give me 10 minutes as I will be inviting the medical people to come and give us a 10 minutes talk. Uh, just uh, 10 minutes and then we'll be done. Please, can I have the podium here? Um, Microphone. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Good morning, everyone. I'm from New Group, Nigeria. I'm here to talk about our health because we have noticed that people neglect their health and focus on other things. That is why we are making this sensitization for, okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. I'm here to sensitize everybody about their health because the, your health is your greatest wealth. Your health is number one. Your health is what keeps you moving. If you're not healthy, you can't do anything. If you wake up in the morning and you break down, you find yourself being useless for the whole day, seeing that nothing is going to work out for you at that moment. I want to ask us now, when was the last time you removed the bad oil in your body and put in the new ones? We all have cars, right? We remove the bad engine, uh, the bad oil in the car, right? And we fill in the, the new ones for our car to function properly. But when was the last time you do that to your health? 
When was the last time you did that to your health? Our life is number one. We don't have a spare life. We don't have a borrowed one either. So, because of my time, I will not go deeply. But I want to give us just some few things that are necessary. Number one is rest. The second one is exercise. And the third one, which is most, most important, is your diet. How do you feed? How is your feeding how is your feeding timetable? How do you make your food? Your food is supposed to be your medicine. At least the number one medicine you should take is your food. How do you prepare that food? How do you make things that you put into your system to make your cells function properly? How do you go about them? Then exercise. We do find it difficult to exercise ourselves. It's not really by you walking every day, going to gym or jogging. You can, if you don't have that kind of strength, you can do that indoor. There are exercises you do indoor that will still give you good effects on your body. That will still keep your cells active. Some diseases that come up, some diseases that have effects, on our body. They don't start immediately. They don't start immediately. There are things that have been there accumulating, piling up. So, the diseases that are pi that causes those effects on our, our system, they are not something that starts immediately. A person that has cancer, cancer is a malfunctioning of cell. The cell that is overgrowing in your body, that is multiplying excessively, that it's not supposed to multiply. Bet me that thing didn't start immediately. It must have started. Give you signs, you neglected them. Give you symptoms, you neglected them. You might take it as a normal thing. This is what is happening to me. I go to the hospital, I check myself, and you do not get to the root of the problem. Yet, you keep doing the same thing over and over time. So the second one is some diseases like kidney stone, kidney failure, liver, malfunctioning of the livers. Like your liver not functioning properly, you not having, not excreting properly. And the most common disease that we have around us now is diabetics. Yes, diabetics, some of them are hereditary. Yes, we know. But at some point, there is something we call prevention. You know this is there. Why don't you do the things that will make it not to grow? And and escalates more than the way it's supposed to be. It has been killing a lot of people. So the thing I want to push us, us into now is let your health be your, your strength. Don't joke with it because it's very important. It's, it's the thing that will keep you, that, also, that will always make you see, I am healthy. You tell yourself, I am healthy. It's only the people of here, the people of God, we, we do, we do, when the reverend is praying, he said, your health, that we should pray for our health, right? And we pray for our health. That is because, why it's being put into prayers is because it's something that you cannot avoid. It's something that you cannot do without. When there is life, there is hope. And that is the reason why your health should be number one. That is the reason why you should take your health very important. Now, it's not all about, maybe when I'm, I'm done talking now, nobody will, 
Nobody would take caution. But let me give you some instance. Okay, we cook vegetable. We cook vegetable in such a way that everything in it dies. The nutrients we absorb from it, it's, you kill it entirely that you don't even get to know the things that you should be doing on the, on the, on the food at that particular time. WHO has made it clear to us that we, only, we have a food pyramid that we should be following, knowing the kind of country we are in, knowing that the things that we see around us is we, as a human being, that will make it um, in our daily for us to be able to prepare those things to be beneficial for us. Number one is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is supposed to be eating 5% of it, but you see, every now and then, we eat rice, cassava, gari, all of them, yam. We, we eat rice in the morning, yam in the afternoon, this one in the evening, we do all of that. You fail to take precaution that you have a grain. You have, you have protein, you have um, wheat that you should, that you should eat as well, that will give you also nutrients. Some of our old daddies and mommy there here, I wave you to, I wave all, I wave all of you. Is a good thing. And I really appreciate when people come of age and they are still very strong. So, in carbohydrates, we are expected to eat just 5%, protein, 15%. Our whole grain, which we neglect most importantly, we neglect it a lot. We are meant to eat 30% of that. We are meant to eat 30% of whole grains. Because it's the whole grains that will give you more energy. They have the fibers. They have the, some of them have wheat that will give you strength, that will be able to absorb. Then, we talk about you rest. We know Nigeria is stressful. We know Nigeria is stressful, yes. Everybody is stressed out. But how do you find yourself giving your body a good treat by resting? At some point, tell yourself, it is enough. Let me have some nap. Let me have some rest. It's not by lying down on the bed, by giving yourself rest. Because you still lie down on the bed and keep seeing that your brains are functioning too much. And you see that you keep thinking, you keep thinking excessively. So this, my time is already up, but we are at, this, at the end of this, this, um, this talk, we are here with some medical um, machines that we use to check your health. We urge everyone, because it is important to know your health status, to check your organs in your body, to know what to do and when not to do it. We are we're positioned outside, we'll be running some checkup for body prognosis, we'll check your lungs, your kidney, those vital organs, your heart beats, the way your, your organs are functioning, if they are okay at the point. If you have anything that is going on, we can give you some advice or some prescription that will assist you to get through to it and work towards your diet as well. Because when you start, it's not just about taking all the artificial medicines, but to give yourself the good food first, then it comes in as well. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. May the children of God never be ill. And may, let us all be healthy to testify the goodness of God in our lives. Okay, the test is just a little token because we want it to benefit everybody. It's just 3,000 Naira for per person.
to check your body organs, we'll check and we'll sensitize you personally on anything that we think or anything that is actually wrong with you. We are positioned outside. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can we clap for the Lord Jesus Christ? God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, they are positioned outside. And if you want to run a test, you can go to them after the service to run this um, test. They are important. And I think that we should um, look at it. And God will keep us healthy in the name of Jesus. Um, well, I welcome every one of us once again. into this uh, divine service. My prayer for everyone is that our testimony will not turn so in the name of Jesus. What God has done us will continue to bring joy to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Once again, I welcome everybody. Uh, our announcements, there are a few here. Uh, the women uh, and, um, uh, will be having a meeting immediately after the service. It's all women to wait behind and attend that meeting. Uh, there are so many of us that are yet to do our family harvest, and I think that we have started today. I think the number will be encouraging from next Sunday as well. We had six families that have done theirs today, and we want to thank everybody that is celebrating Jesus in this way. The blessings of God will be permanent upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Remember that November is the family harvest uh, ending. The family harvest will be ending in November, not 17, but 26, uh, last Sunday of November. November 26, that's the final day for the family harvest. Please let us come around to celebrate our family harvest. But if you cannot do it, you can tell me, and by December, I can still open up the door, special door, for you to have their family harvest. Because uh, somebody just winked at me. I think it's Barista. I said, I will cause Apo, and I will do it like that. Our God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Uh, I want to welcome uh, one of our, our own, our, one of our fathers in God, who uh, is on visit to one of our brothers here. Uh, and as decided to worship with us today, we welcome you, Brother Kenneth Chuku Nwosu. He is a reverend and the vicar of St. Mark's Anglican Parish, Agua, uh, uh, Agota Dauces. They are welcome in Jesus' name. Can we clap for the Lord Jesus Christ? Thank you very much, sir, for coming. Heaven will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the confirmation, we have been announcing it, and the time has come. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, is going to be confirmation. Confirmation is coming this Saturday, this coming Saturday. And we have decided that because we did not put the date out on time, we want to have a crash program for as many that have not joined. So we'll be having three classes this week. Those classes are very compulsory, very, very compulsory. If you don't come for those classes, uh, we will not present you at confirmation. And I like to say it like this. In the days when we were young, uh, very, very, uh, just recently, not too long, I'm a very young boy. Uh, when we had our confirmation, we started class one year before the, the day they end the confirmation is the day another class will start. One year before. And then they did not burn you that you don't know the catechism by head. Uh, if you don't know it by head, you have to be able to repeat and say answer immediately. They ask you the question. And then we wrote tests. I remember my father was a priest. He was the vicar of my church. And I remember that I failed 1988. I did not fail. He said I, that I failed character. He said I, did, I lacked character. So he said that he should not present me. 1988. 1989, he said he was not sure. He did not present me. 1990, 
I had to run to Baba Ditului to go and tell him myself that I've been presented for confirmation three times. I have had passes for three times, but the, um, uh, uh, the umpire has been cheating, has been denying me confirmation. So he had to call my father to say, that boy must be confirmed. And I remember that in confirmation, he was asking me the question, asking stand up, and he will ask me and I will answer so that I will prove that he was worthy of my being confirmed. And that's what it should be. I cannot forget all of those states forever and ever. The things they taught us for one year. Every Monday was confirmation class. And you will run there. If you are late, you will be punished. You will write tests and so on and so forth. Uh, so it is compulsory. I'm not one of those priests that presents just anybody for confirmation. I am one of those that wants to have somebody that I'm presenting and I'll be able to vouch for, for confirmation. So it is compulsory. If they don't come for these three classes this week, we would not be able to present them for confirmation. And if there is a reason they will not be able to make those three classes, which may be their main, I will be the only person that can give permission for that. And the meaning is that they would join us. We don't mind to run online classes wherever they are so that we can run these classes very effectively. So Monday, Monday, which day? Monday, Wednesday, and, and Friday. Friday is also rehearsal. Uh -huh. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, these three days, very, very compulsory. 5 p.m., please, confirmation class uh, is very compulsory. 5 p.m. Uh, Labico is our Bible college. It's our Bible college, and uh, we have venues all over Lagos. We have in um, Lagos on the island. We have in Archbishop Vining. We also have in All Saints, uh, Ikosi. So please, if you want to study the Bible more, I sent some of my children there last year from my church uh, in Ojota, and uh, they came back with glowing testimonies. They are so happy that they are attending. If you want to do the Bible more, Labiko is uh, for us. Please, let us do this. Uh, we commiserate with the family of uh, brother and uh, sister Ake Shete, who uh, lost their father, Papa Dr. Valentine, Amokende Ake Shete, about uh, some few weeks ago. He's not an old man. He was just 93 when he passed. He's not, he's not an old man because my own father will soon be 93 and I don't want him to die. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, uh, he's not an old man. Uh, we thank God for his life and we have decided that uh, Brother Tumbola has promised me that he's going to bring a cow. I'm going to do some uh, meetings with the cow at the back of my house there so that we can know what killed Papa and be able to fight it. It will not kill another person. Uh, so, but we celebrate the life of Papa who has gone to be with the Lord and um, his funeral arrangement is going to be as follows. Uh, the uh, Imperial Hall, number one, uh, the Kinogubi close. Uh, will be for the Christian week. Eh? That's for the Christian week. And then for the funeral, it's going to be that Bishop Vining Memorial Cathedral by 9 a.m. on the 3rd of November. On the 3rd of November. And uh, that will be the final Kokari. Uh, Brother Tumbola will be sending messages to people. But we commiserate with him and pray along with him and the entire family that God will uphold them all in Jesus name Friday uh, 20th we'll be having the Dow system vigil as men that want to join us please the bus will be available the time is 10 a.m. at uh, 10 p.m. and the bus will be leaving here latest 9 30 latest 9 30 uh, the bus will be available for us to go we uh, will be having uh, the service of uh, my family with Christ for the family of our brother, Brother Celeste, 
uh, may be at uh, 5 p.m. today in this sanctuary, 5 p.m. today. So we are um, uh, encouraging everybody. Uh, I know a lot of us don't know Brother Celestine. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at him. Let him stand up so that we can see him. He's the incoming warden. Uh, sorry. Uh, that's Brother Celestine. I will be having the family with Christ today by 5 p.m. We are encouraging everybody to join Brother Celestine in celebrating his family with Christ. And God will honor us, honor us all in Jesus' name. Uh, if there's anybody worshiping with us for the first time, we're excited to have you. We're happy that you're here. Can you please stand so that we can welcome you? Anybody worshiping with us for the first time? The first time in this sanctuary? Aha, we did not invite anybody. Help me ask your neighbor, why did you invite somebody? Hallelujah. What did they say? Let me ask your neighbor again. Why didn't you invite somebody? Ask your neighbor for me. Tell your neighbor for me. Say, on Tuesday. Tell your neighbor now. On Tuesday, we will be having Bible study. I will see you there. Hallelujah. Our Bible study is on Tuesday, and so I will be expecting every one of us to be here. On Tuesday, we will be studying uh, the conclusion of the uh, throning of uh, David. We have been discussing David, and we have gotten to the point where David will be climbing the throne and sitting on the throne. Last week, he had gotten some of the thrones, but he had not been able to sit on the real throne. And so this week, we'll be concluding on the sitting of the throne of David. Please let us be a part of it. Bible study is always fun, and we also live stream. Now, we are also live streaming now. Uh, if you are far away and you can't join us live here, you can also join us uh, on the live stream. All our handles are available. Just send Jude's and you'll be able to join us. And God will bless us and increase every one of us in the name of Jesus. Once again, help me look at your neighbor's face. If your neighbor is not smiling, help me smile at your neighbor. Maybe your smile will be infectious. If your neighbor is smiling, Help me thank your neighbor for smiling. If your neighbor is, is still not smiling, look for another neighbor. Eh? Tell that neighbor, it is well with you in Jesus' name. Say to that neighbor, I will not mourn you in Jesus' name. Say, I will not hear evil of you in Jesus' name. Say to that neighbor, I will celebrate with you in Jesus' name. Whether the devil likes it or not, I will celebrate with you. So shall it be in Jesus' name. We pray they would draw him.
Peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.